Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 8. This video presentation will be on Proposition 1 of Book 8. And in this proposition, we're starting with a series of numbers that are in continuous proportion. And in this particular example, we're using four numbers. So we have four numbers, A, B, C, and D, where the ratio of A to B is equal to the ratio of B to C, which is equal to the ratio of C to D. And that is what is meant by continuous proportion. In addition to being in continuous proportion, the number A and the number D are relatively primed to each other. So these are the initial conditions, and the proposition states that there are no numbers that are smaller than A, B, C, and D. So there is no number that's less than A, another number that's less than B, and so on, such that they form a continuous proportion and the first two numbers are in the same proportion as A and B. So here is sort of the mathematical um, notation for any mathematicians out there. But as we progress with this proof, you will see what is meant by having the least numbers. So again, this proposition states that we have four numbers in um, continued proportion, where the first and the last are relatively prime to each other. And if these two conditions are true, then A, B, C, and D are the least numbers that are in this ratio of A to B. So let's start the proof. Again, we're starting with A to B is B to C, which is C to D, and A and D are relatively prime. We're going to prove this by contradiction, which means we're going to start off assuming that this proposition is false. So we're going to start by assuming that we have four other numbers, E, F, G, and H, where E and F is equal to F to G is equal to G to H, and the ratio of E to F is equal to A to B, and that E is less than A. All right, so we are assuming that um, this proposition is not true, and here are our numbers that are less than A, B, C, D. So if A, B, C, D are in continuous proportion, and E, F, G, H are also in continuous proportion, and they are equal to each other, according to Proposition 14 of Book 7, A to D, the ratio of A to D, will be equal to the ratio of E to H. Now we know that the um, A and D are relatively prime, that's part of the definition. So according to Proposition 21 of Book 7, A and D are the least numbers in this ratio. In other words, there's no numbers that are smaller than A and D that have this ratio. According to Proposition 20 of Book 7, if we have two ratios that are equal, A to D is equal to E to H, and A and D are the least numbers of that ratio, then A measures E and D measures H. In other words, um, E is some multiple of A and H is some multiple of M, of D, excuse me. And having followed this logic through, we have now come to a logical inconsistency. We have stated that E is less than A, as part of our original um, idea, and we also have that E is measured by A. And these two statements cannot both be true. And hence, we have come up to a contradiction. And thus, our original idea that there is a number E that's less than A, such that E to F is F to G to G is H, and so on and so forth, this cannot be true because it leads to an, a logical inconsistency. So because it's a logical inconsistency, we can then turn around and say, well, A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D are the least numbers in the ratio of A to B. And hence, um, that is our proof.